Hey everyone, I'm Ultima456, you're the Ultimate, and welcome to episode 53 of Let's Platinum and 100% Resident Evil 7. Alright, so we're going to go straight back into the Daughters DLC, and we are now going to try um, the other path. Here we go, another path. Find Mia. She's the key to unlocking this nightmare. So Mia. Hmm. Alright. So let's try and put the uh, events in order. Jack. Uh, this is 2000 and... 14, I think, is it? Yeah, I think it's 2014. Jack, uh, there's a storm in Louisiana and Jack goes out to the bio um, where the ship crashed to see if there's any survivors. His dream is actually to start a bed and breakfast. He wants to, he and Marguerite want to run like a shelter foster home or whatever. Um, and he finds Evelyn, um, brings her back and she starts all of this. Um, and so now Zoe is trying to basically survive or we're trying to go down the right path. This, this opening scene here with the, um, with the news anchor and all that, um, it looks like it's half real, half not. We can skip this though. So I'm just gonna, just gonna skip it this time because it doesn't really, okay. doesn't really say anything else that we don't already know. All right. So Marguerite open up. I found another one. So, Jack's brought home different people. You can actually see, yeah, Marguerite was trying to fight off Evelyn in the previous oh, episode. She's so young. Yeah, how's that and, and Jack's hair seems to change as well. It goes like grayer. Zoe, go get some fresh clothes from the laundry room, okay? You can't actually, you know, close the door or go go out that way. You have to wait until Lucas Let's get moves. Four girls some fresh clothes and into a warm bed. Mm. We'll put her in Lucas's old room. Oh, come on, can't you put her somewhere else? Oh, Lucas, you just hush. Long up from that room. Always want to run a bed breakfast. You got your big break, didn't you? Mm hmm. Get her to bed. Always run, wanted to run on. a bed and breakfast. Got your big break, didn't you? Good night for soup, don't you think? Oh, height difference. Lucas. <laughs> nah. I don't know. He, he's also got like a problem with his knees or something. <laughs> What was that code again? 1019. I'm sure that's definitely not important. <laughs> There's a change of clothes in the laundry room, dear. There sure is, Marguerite. There sure is. But before we do that, let's uh, let's get that lockpick again. And this time, we're not going to unlock this drawer because as we saw last time, that didn't do diddly squat. <laughs> um, instead... We're going to unlock the drawer in the bathroom and see if that does something. All right, what's going to be in here? Whatever it is, it should help us out. A small component. Hmm. I wonder what that is. Looks like a part from something. You feel as if you've seen it before. I do feel like I've seen that before somewhere. Well, we'll work that out when we get there. Uh, let's get the change of clothes and we'll go straight to Evelyn again. So yeah, this goes really fast. Like you could probably speed run this in like five minutes. <laughs> Any, nope. I was like thinking, can you open that? <laughs> this house is so, I don't know. Creepy, <laughs> I said it. All right, um, so change clothes, we're going to Evelyn. But maybe this time things will be different. Even um, the, like, the acting here with Jack and all that, you can tell, like, how much he actually cares when he's not affected by Evelyn. I need to check on the boathouse. It's half of the water last I looked. Yes, Daddy. He's a big man, too. He's about six foot four, probably. All right, before Evelyn takes control. This was missing something, wasn't it? Ah, we put the small component in here. We can get up here. Interesting. Well, let's see what Lucas has been working on up here. I'm sure it's not important anyway. <laughs> All right, let's have a look around. The bubble head's not here. That shelving's not here. See, I told you, absolutely nothing of any interest and wait what the hell is all this <laughs> got his own meth lab up here 
trying to get radio frequencies from somewhere. What's this? Zoe, I told you to keep your dirty hands off my laptop. Dum dum. Ah, uh, you're just jealous of my hacker skills. This is what you get for using the same password for your phone and your computer. Dip shoop. <laughs> um, okay, so he uses the same password for his phone and his computer. What was that password again? We do know it. This is this is confusing though. I I, I didn't get this part. So it says Zoe. I told you to keep your dirty hands off my laptop. So that's Zoe saying that, right? And then Dum Dum, I guess, would be Lucas. Oh, you're just jealous of my hacker skills. This is what you get for using the same password for your phone and your computer. But I'm just I'm trying to work out. So maybe Zoe, maybe Zoe wrote this. I I I honestly can't figure out like who's writing it and. I don't know, it's weird. Maybe I'm not thinking about it enough, but yeah, I can't I can't see that. So if someone knows, let me know. Alright. 1019. Yes. It worked. The FU list, October 2014 edition. The old man slapped me right in the face for checking my phone during dinner. F you. I can't say one word about Mama's cooking without getting yelled at. F you. All I did was look in on Zoe when she was doing yoga and she calls me a pervert. F you. The old man got drunk and started throwing all my crap in that red box out on the veranda. F you. Hmm. So, the latest contestant in the Everyone Hates Lucas game <laughs> is uh, is that laptop. Because Lucas is a big jerk. Yeah, if you, th if you hate Lucas now, ho ho, just wait. <laughs> He's a nasty piece of work. Oh, you can't kick these. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Oh well. Alright, little girl. Let's get you cleaned up. They're mine now. They're mine now. What? Whoever did um Evelyn's voice actor did a really good job. Alright, she closed the door on us again. Turn the lighter on. Alright, so what did we learn Daddy, so far? Is the power out? We learnt that Is there a light in its track? Uh Jack threw Lucas's stuff in a red box outside on the veranda. So we actually have an opportunity to go outside on the veranda in a moment. Um Yeah. I love how also we've just read what we read about Lucas, Lucas doing whatever. What or like um Are you okay? Perving on Zoe. And she's like, Are you okay? <laughs> I mean obviously she still would be like, you know, he may be a pervert, but He's still a human. But um yeah, no reaction whatsoever. <laughs> Give him a little kick. <laughs> what the hell's going on? Look at all the pretties. Again, if you if a uh, if it wasn't um what do you call that this point here where you see Jack just come in out of nowhere, like check out his his like facial expressions, like especially when he closes the door. So good. So well done. Come see you. So intense that shaking. Uh, I don't know. I'll never. It, despite the brevity of this DLC, it is. It is really, really, really good. I kind of just wanted it to keep going, that's the thing. It, it just, like, obviously, it's just saying all it needs to say in its um, extremely short runtime, but it is really cool. Okay, so everything at the moment now is going to play out the same way. Jack's going to cut himself with the knife that he just carries on him at all times. <laughs> and, uh,. And we're going to go into the was it recreation room? I think that's what it's called. And for some reason, like Jack here has already been taken over, and his hair changes. Like I said, he loses that last little bit at the top, and it goes like lighter. I love his line here: "Loneliness is next to godliness," and your mother's mother's pretty effing close to meeting him right now. <laughs> Pulls out a knife, about to stab you, stabs himself. Look at that. Just cut through like all those bones. 
can't do that. What are you talking about? Your sister. <laughs> Right. Run! I'm just gonna have to teach you a lesson. You're uh, just gonna have to. <laughs> right. Yoink! All right, Let's get out of here again. Fork. Fork. If you wait long enough, he'll, he says something like, I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow this door down or whatever. <laughs> it's like the big bad wolf. Now this part's interesting. So I was like looking for the, the red box. Because remember, I was like, where's that red box? And I was like, oh, there it is. And I kept walking towards it. And I automatically just kind of like teleported to this little um, opening that you can squeeze through. And I was like, oh, I'm really glad that I did that. Because I don't know if I would have figured that, figured that out as quick by just pressing. Ah, I got the dog head relief. That's interesting. Well, we know where this goes. Let's see if we can uh, use that to change history. So this part is interesting, like Lucas was knocked out, but then Jack drags him into the room. It's so terrifying, I mean, like, he's a jerk, but like, what is Jack gonna do, you know what I mean? like. Because it's technically Evelyn under control. Oh, I'm getting good RNG again. I was pressing the wrong button. Where is she? And she's coming this way, and I might get caught here. Nope. All right, we're good. If you try and stand and walk, she's just gonna spot you almost immediately. So this is the part that can take the longest. I'm guessing when she does that to swat away the fly, uh, the, like the butterflies, she's like somewhat turning back into the original Marguerite, like she's confused about what she's doing. Because Evelyn seems to have complete control, but not always. And then again, she could have complete control and just choose to take away control when she wants. Are you there? Oh, come on. Damn it. <laughs> I think she's probably gonna catch me. Yeah, she got me. Oh well. Is she gonna kill me? I actually don't know. Oh, she's giving me a slap. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, yeah, that's right, this thing. This is terrifying as well. What's the matter, honey? Don't you want to play with your new sister? <laughs> I failed. <laughs> That's alright. We'll do that again. Lucas's password. Lucas's laptop is password protected, but knowing his half-assed approach to things, he might have used the same password on other devices. If only you could catch him using the password somewhere else. Uh, trophy, lockpicks, lighting away. Okay, cool. That Lucas's password thing, I got very lucky when I was first when I first played this, like the, literally the very first time. I happened to um, sort of just walk past Lucas, and I was like, "Oh, he's got a he's got a phone." And then I just happened to see him put in his password, and I was like, "Oh, that's probably going to come in handy at some point." And yeah, I was pretty lucky because not only did I see the password, but I, I remembered it when I needed it. If you miss seeing the password there right at the beginning, um, you probably won't get to see it again. Because I know when I did it... Uh, am I going to make this? Please let me make this. If I can get behind this thing, I think I'm okay. Uh-oh. Quick. Alright, we're good. Nice. Um, yeah, I don't think he allows you to see the password again if you if you miss it the first time. This can't be real. Because I, I sort of stood there waiting for him to use it again and he just kind of has the same motion. If you stand next to him long enough as well, he just like tells you to go away as well. It's like, what the hell are you doing? Um, there's nothing in the, in the courtyard. Like I looked and looked and looked and looked. Everything is like blocked off. You can just barely see there's some fencing that's blocked blocking the way and yeah everything's blocked off so the only place you can go is the trailer and apparently the uh the water doesn't get rid of the 
the flame. All right, so let's look in here, anything? It's looking a whole lot cleaner than it was the first time. Things are more packed away. Mm-hmm. Milk crate. Thing and oh, hi Mia. Fancy seeing you here. Talk about creepy. All right, so this explains how um, how Zoe got the uh, D series head. Looks like Mia had it on her the whole time. And now we read this note to the Baker family. Thank you for saving my life, but please forget all about me. I was assigned to transport some important cargo on that ship. Getting involved with me or that cargo can only cause trouble for your family. Big trouble. Please don't contact the police or state authorities. Just pretend we never met. And you saved me. So take, take this advice in return. If you see a girl near the ship who looks about 10 years old, do not approach her. If she talks to you, get away as quickly as you can. Just try not to make it. Try not to make her angry in the process. If you've been feeling ill at all, then I'm afraid the worst may have already happened. Or may already have happened. It's a fate worse than death, and it can't be cured at a hospital. I'm so sorry. There is a way to stop it, though. C uh, serum. If you inj stop the sim... So, probably going to say something. If you inject... Um, inject... Uh, what is it? Nothing really fits there to... <laughs> like, if you inject the... Inject yourself. No, that's too big. Anyway, if you inject yourself, you can stop the symptoms. The rest of the text is difficult to make out. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> Hopefully my slow turn there was pretty good. <laughs> oh, watch um, Jack in this scene. Especially well, this beginning well, part. It's so good. To join us. Wake up and smell the shitty coffee, Zoe. Lucas. Watch. Okay, see that? Wake up and smell the uh, you know what coffee. And then he looks at. He says. He tells Lucas. He's like, you know, watch yourself. Watch this eye hold. Ready? So let's say this is like already one second, two, three, four, <laughs> four seconds of eye hold. Amazing. Uh, Did you just interrupt me? We thought we were alone. And the next time it rained, there was a mess for sure. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> How incredible was that? Alright. And that's the end of that one. Now, Zoe's mundane life has become a struggle for survival. She will spend her days slipping through the grasp of her now insane family, searching for the serum that Mia spoke of in her letter. The nights are marked by the family's murderous feasts, and Evelyn's body deteriorates as the months go by. Eventually, Zoe will encounter Ethan, her best hope at finding the serum, but she has a long way to go before that day. And so began the horror. And there's a little bit more, I think. I can't remember. Or is that it? One instinct survival. No, that's it. All right. So that's daughters. Um, yeah. So you know, that's kind of the the bad ending was obviously a bad ending, uh, and then the good end or the you know the true ending is what happened. So Evelyn showed up, and then. She took control of the family, and then also, uh, yeah, she's she's real, and then she starts to age rapidly, and that's why in the three years that she spent there, she turned from the little girl to the old woman that we saw at the end of um, the end of the game, or well, you know, during the feast. So it's quite reminiscent there, and I don't know, really well done. All the again, like I said, this is such a short DLC. Um, it takes like, well, I think your first time might take you like an hour to get through, um, with both endings, but it's such a short DLC, but it just tells you everything you need to know. It's so well acted, so well done. 
Um, there are minor differences in, in the character models, especially involving Jack and Marguerite. Like Marguerite's face is all, is a little bit um, like she has like protrusions, like her sort of um, skull structure is different. Um, and it's even more exaggerated when she's like uh, been infected by Evelyn. And I think with Jack, it's like his hair is kind of gone and he's just completely mental. Um, yeah, we don't really get to see exactly what happens to Lucas too much, at least not in this, at this moment, but yeah. And then Zoe, we actually don't know. Like she just kind of hangs out in the trailer, I guess. Yeah, she hangs out in the trailer and manages to try and avoid them for like three years. Could you imagine being in, in that situation, <laughs> trying to avoid your family for three years and like they're murderous and you're living that close to them? It's pretty insane. Uh, but yeah, that was that was fantastic. Um, all right, so I'm going to end things off here. And next time, we're going to move on to the next part of the DLC, which is Jack's 55th birthday. So this is a, an interesting little DLC. I'll explain more about it next time. Um, I expect this will probably only take about three or four episodes at the very most. Um, I actually really like this. Like when I first played it, I was like, uh, this is going to be one of those like frustrating things, but it's actually a bit easier than I thought at least in my opinion, and it'll be easy for you guys to get everything that you need to do the trophies. So um, we're going to work on that next time. But for now, I want to thank you all for watching episode 53 of Let's Platinum and 100% Resident Evil 7. My name's Ultima456, get the ultimates, and I'll see you next time.